Designing reusable components is a super important practice in web development. It helps you save so much time, and when done right, really makes your project more readable, maintainable, and scalable. View slot element can help us achieve this by distributing content into custom components. In this tutorial, we'll be using slots to build a custom tab component that allows any sort of content to be turned into a single page tab system. Let's jump right in. Once again, we're going to be using Vite to create our app. So inside our terminal, let's type npm init at vite.js slash app. Enter the name of our app and select view as our template. After it's created, we can cd into our project, get our dependencies with npm install, and then start up our app with npm run dev. If you want to learn more about why Vite is a great tool for front-end developers, check out our full tutorial linked in the description. Before we dive into the code, let's take a look at how our app is going to work. We're going to need two components for our tab system. First, tab.view will contain the individual content for each tab, and all of these tab components will be located inside tabs wrapper.view, which will also handle conditionally rendering our elements. Both of these components will take full advantage of slots to make awesome reusable code. Now we can create both of these files. So inside our components folder, we'll make tabs wrapper.view and tab.view. To start implementing this into our app, let's head over to app.view. Let's start off by removing this text align style down here just to make everything look more consistent. Inside of our script, make sure to import both tabs wrapper and tab. Then, inside of our template, we'll create our tabs wrapper component. And inside here, we'll create four different tab components, each with a title and some content inside. In the code that we just wrote, we already used view slots many times. This entire chunk of code is passed as a slot to tabswrapper.view. And then for each tab, these parts of text are passed as slots. Slots allow us to write components that can take a wide variety of content. In fact, in each of these tab components, we can have anything we want, forms, text, images, and so on, all within this singular component. But if you notice right now, nothing's rendering in our app. So to start rendering out these slots, we have to head over to tabswrapper.view. It's really easy to display slots. All we have to do is type in slot like this in our template. Finally, let's go to tab.view and do the same thing to render our tab slots. Back in our app, we can see the body of our tabs. And if we inspect element, we'll see that our DOM is properly mounted and arranged. Okay. Now that we have a way to display our tabs, let's create the navigation area for them. Inside Tabs Wrapper, we're going to use the Composition API to get our slot. So we'll create our script section and then create our setup method. Since we need access to our component slots, we need to add arguments to the setup method. The first argument past the setup is the component's props. The second is a context object with three variables. The component's attributes, an emit method to emit events, and the component slots, which we're going to be using for this tutorial. We can access the slots property by destructuring the context object. Next, we'll need to create a reactive variable that will represent all of our tab's titles. Let's import ref from view, and then inside setup type const tab titles equals slots.default. Slots.default will give us an array of all of the nodes inside the tab component slot. So for us, we will get all of the individual tabs. Since we're only interested in the title field, we can use the arrays.map method and return tab.props.title. Let's return tab titles from our setup method, and if we print it to the screen, we'll see that we can get each of our tabs. With that set up, let's actually render them to the screen. First, let's wrap our whole template inside of a div with a class of tabs. Next, we'll create an unordered list with a class of tabs header. In this list, we'll loop over all of our tab titles and print them out. Okay, it may not look the best, but we have our tab header system set up. And don't worry, we'll make it look much better in a few minutes. Now, let's work on only displaying one tab at a time. And to do this, we're going to use views provide inject pairing. To keep it short, provide and inject allow us to use a parent component as a dependency provider for any of its children, without having to directly pass data in props. For our use case, our tabs wrapper is going to provide a reactive value that tracks the selected title. Then, inside each tab, we're going to inject this reactive value and use it to determine whether or not that particular tab should be visible. Let's start off in tabs wrapper by importing both ref and provide from view. Inside setup, let's create our reactive variable called selected title. 
and we'll set this to the first title in the tab titles array. And then we'll call provide, and it takes two arguments. The first is the property's name. For this case, it will be selected title. And the second argument is the value, and we want to pass in our reactive selected title. The last thing we have to do in this component is make it so that when we click in our navigation, our selected title changes. Let's add an event listener for the click event by typing at click. And when this happens, we want to set selected title to the title. So now we set up providing our reactive selected title. So now let's inject it into each tab. So inside tab.view, let's make a script section and import inject from view. To start off, we need to declare our title prop in our export default. Next, we can create our setup method and make a constant called selected title and set it equal to inject. And in here, we'll pass in the same property name from before, so selected title. Let's return that from our script section. And back in the template, we can use a simple vshow directive to conditionally display this div. All we have to do is type vshow equals and then check if our title prop is equal to the selected title. Back in our app, we'll see that only one tab is visible. And when we click around the different headers in our list, the tab switches to the corresponding content. So technically, we have our tab system working. And if you don't care about styling at all, the rest of this video may not be the most interesting to you. But we're going to make this look like an actual tab interface just by adding a few quick styles. First, inside tabs wrapper, we're going to create our style section and set the tabs class to have a max width and also be centered. Next, we're going to give the tabs header section a margin bottom of 10 pixels, set the list style to none, the padding to zero, and the display to flex. This will remove the bullets and list indentation, and display flex will make the list items render horizontally. To style these list items, let's give them a width, center the text, and add some padding and margin. Then we'll change the background color to a nice gray and add some curved edges with a border radius. The last two properties we want to modify is the cursor to give the users visual feedback, and then we'll set the transition property. One really neat feature we can add is to change the style of the header that is currently selected. To do this, we can use views vbind attribute to dynamically add class names. Inside the template, we'll type colon class equals an object, and the key will be the class we want to add. So let's call it selected. And then the value will be a Boolean that determines when to add the class. And we want to add it when title is equal to selected title. Back in our styles, let's change the background color and text color for the selected title. It's already looking much, much better. To wrap things up, let's go to tab.view and style the content area by giving it a minimum height, padding, a border radius, and finally a drop shadow. So here's our final result. I think it looks pretty clean and is definitely a fantastic starting point for custom tab systems in Vue. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Vue content. Peace.